Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This video is about Bertrand's postulate, which says that in the set containing the integers n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3, all the way to 2n, there is at least one prime number, and this is true for every n that is a positive integer. To prove this result, we make use of the binomial coefficient 2n choose n. Specifically, we will use bounds, upper and lower bounds, on this particular binomial coefficient. And we use those bounds to show that if there is a set like this without a prime, then n must be small. If n is large enough, this set is guaranteed to have a prime number. So what about the small values of n? We can, for those, use the following sequence of primes, 2, 3, 5, 7, 13, 23, and so on. This is a sequence in which each prime number, starting from the second one, which is 3, is less than double the previous prime number. Those primes will be in any set in this form if we take n to be 1 or 2 or 3 all the way to 520. For example, let's say that n is equal to 13. So the set of interest will be the numbers 14, 15, all the way to double this number, which is 26. This set contains 23. Now, if n is 14, then our set will be 15, 16, all the way to 28. We have 23 in this set. And this is true all the way to n equal to 22. Now, 23 will be the first element in this set. If n is 23, then our set starts from 24, but it goes all the way to double this number, 46. And this set contains the next prime in the sequence, which is 43. So by using this nice trick of, of having a sequence of primes in which each prime is smaller than double its immediate predecessor, then we can establish Bertrand's postulate for all those n values. And using the binomial coefficient 2n, choose n, and the bounds on it, we will establish the postulate for every n. Let's start with the factorial of n. Let's write the factorial of n using its prime factorization. Factorial of n is the product of primes. Prime p is raised to this power from Legendre's result. The power is the summation k from 1 to infinity, the floor of n over p to the power k. If we replace n by 2n, this will be the prime factorization of 2n factorial. Here we have 2n. Now, the binomial coefficient, which is 2n choose n, is 2n factorial divided by n factorial squared. So it is a product over the primes, where prime p is raised to the power summation k from 1 to infinity. Then we have this floor of 2n over p to the power k minus 2 the floor of n over p to the power k. This 2 comes from the square here. Let's think about the kth term in this summation. Now we know that if we have a real number alpha, then the floor of alpha is less than or equal to alpha, but is strictly greater than alpha minus 1. Let's apply this to these two floors. The floor of 2n over p to the power k is less than or equal to 2n over p to the power k, but is strictly greater than 2n over p to the power k minus 1. This is the same story, but for the floor of n over p to the power k. Now take this inequality and multiply all sides by minus 2. So we have minus 2 and over p to the power k. And then, because we are multiplying by a negative number, this guy will come here. After multiplying by minus 2, we get 2 minus 2n over p to the power k. And this guy will come here as minus 2n over p to the power k, which is this inequality. Now add these two inequalities. If we add them, then we get that the floor of 2n over p to the power k minus 2 the floor of n over p to the power k is strictly between minus 1 and 2. Well, this is an integer. And the only possible integers between minus 1 and 2 are 0 and 1. We know now that the kth term is only 0 or 1. Suppose that p to the power k is greater than 2n. This means that 2n divided by p to the power k is less than unity. So the floor of 2n over p to the power k is 0. Now n is less than 2n. So if this floor is 0, that floor is 0 and the kth term will be equal to 0. So those terms are potentially non-zero for a k value that satisfies that p to the power k is less than or equal to 2n. The maximum possible number of terms in this summation 
is the floor of log 2n over log b. And the highest prime power is the floor of log 2n over log b. Recall that each term here is 0 or 1. So this is the maximum power that we can have in the prime factorization of 2n choose n. If the prime b is strictly greater than the square root of 2n, then take the logarithm of both sides and the logarithm of the square root 2n is 1 half log 2n. So divide by log b. So we have 1 half log 2n divided by log b is less than 1, which means that log 2n over log b is less than 2. So this quantity here is strictly less than 2. In this case, we have just one term in this summation. For primes strictly greater than the square root of 2n, p is raised to either 0 or 1, and that's it. Now, let's focus on this range of prime numbers given n, the range between 2n over 3 and n. So we have factorial of 2n divided by n factorial squared, like this. Now, p is less than or equal to n, which is less than 2n. So if we write down 2n factorial, it's 2n, 2n minus 1, and then n, n minus 1, all the way to 2, then 1, then this contains p. Also, this 2n factorial contains 2 times b. But given that p is in this range, then this product does not include 3 times b. p is strictly greater than 2n over 3. This means that 3p is strictly greater than 2n. So in the numerator of the binomial coefficient, we will have p and we will have 2p. And so we will have p squared. What about the denominator? p is less than or equal to n. So the factorial of n contains p. But 2b is strictly greater than 4n over 3, which is strictly greater than n. So n factorial contains b, but not 2b. So we have b in the denominator, but then there is this square. So we also have p squared in the denominator. Those will cancel, and the prime factorization of the binomial coefficient will not have primes in this range. All the primes in this range have a power of 0. The binomial coefficient 2n choose n as a product of primes in terms of its prime factorization. It's a product involving the primes less than or equal to square root 2n. Those will be raised to powers, perhaps high numbers. Let's say that the prime p is raised to the power alpha sub p. In the range from square root 2n to 2n over 3, the power is 0 or 1. This is true for every prime that is strictly greater than the square root of 2n. But we stop here at 2n over 3, because for the primes that are strictly greater than 2n over 3, and that are less than or equal to n, those are raised to the power 0. Then we have the primes that are strictly greater than n and are less than or equal to 2n. The powers here are 0 or 1. Suppose that there exists a positive integer n such that there is no prime in this set. This means that this product is 1. And in the prime factorization of the binomial coefficient 2n choose n, we need to handle these two products only. Let's upper bound. Each term in this product is upper bounded by p because the power is 0 or 1. So let's assume that all the powers are equal to 1, and this will be the upper bound on this product. For this other product, what is the highest possible power? So we know from our previous investigation that the highest positive prime power is this floor. Okay, so we have p, and let's even remove the floor. So this is log 2n over log b. b to the power log 2n over log b, that's 2n. So we can upper bound each term here by 2n. And so this product is upper bounded by 2n raised to the power square root 2n minus 1. The primes start from 2. We need to further upper bound this product here. What should we do? Let's turn our focus to another binomial coefficient, which is 2m plus 1 choose m. As any binomial coefficient, this is an integer. It is equal to 2m plus 1, 2m, 2m minus 1, all the way to m plus 2, divided by the factorial of m. There are primes in the numerator, but those primes are not divisible by any term in the denominator. And because the binomial coefficient is an integer, this means that this binomial coefficient 
is equal to the product of the primes in the numerator times some integer, which is one or more. So this product, which we have here, is upper bounded by the binomial coefficient 2m plus 1 choose m. We want now to show that the product of the primes less than or equal to x, and x is a real number greater than or equal to 2, that this product is less than or equal to 4 to the power x minus 1. If x is equal to 2, then the product of the primes is 2, and 4 to the power 2 minus 1 is 4. If x is 3, then the product is 2 times 3, which is 6, and 4 to the power 3 minus 1 is 16. So let's do induction. The product of the primes be less than or equal to x. Let's assume that this is less than or equal to 4 to the x minus 1 for every x in this range from 2 all the way to 2m plus 1. Now consider y that is in the interval from 2m plus 1 to 2m plus 3. So y is a real number that is in this interval. The product of the primes less than or equal to y is equal to the product of primes less than or equal to 2m plus 1 because the other integer in this interval is 2m plus 2 and 2m plus 2 is an even number and now we are talking about the odd primes. So this product here is exactly equal to the product of the primes less than or equal to 2m plus 1. We can split this product into two products, the primes all the way to m plus 1 and then the primes from m plus 1 to 2m plus 1. By the induction assumption, this product is less than or equal to 4 to the power m plus 1 minus 1, that's 4 to the power m. And based on this argument involving the binomial coefficient 2m plus 1 choose m, this will be the upper bound on this other product. So the product of the primes less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 4 to the power m times the binomial coefficient 2m plus 1 choose m. If we take 2 to the power 2m plus 1, this is 1 plus 1 to the power 2m plus 1. And this can be expanded as 2m plus 1 choose 0 plus 2m plus 1 choose 1. And then we have 2m plus 1 choose m. And then we have 2m plus 1 choose m plus 1. And these two guys are exactly equal. And then we have all the terms to 2m plus 1 choose 2m plus 1. So 2 to the power 2m plus 1 is strictly greater than double this binomial coefficient. And so this binomial coefficient is less than 2 to the power 2m, which is 4 to the power m. So this means that the product of the primes less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 4 to the power 2m. And because y is greater than or equal to 2m plus 1, then 4 to the power 2m is less than or equal to 4 to the power y minus 1. So now let's go back to our upper bound. Now this product of primes, even if we start from 1, is less than or equal to 4 to the power 2n over 3 minus 1. This is the upper bound that we have now. For a lower bound, take 2 to the power 2n. That's 1 plus 1 to the power 2n. And this is summation g from 0 to 2n, 2n choose j. So we have a term 2n choose 0, another one 2n choose 2n. Both are equal to 1 and their sum is equal to 2. And then we have the remaining 2n minus 1 binomial coefficients. 2n choose 1 is equal to 2n choose 2n minus 1. 2n choose 2 is equal to 2n choose 2n minus 2 and so on. And the biggest term here is the middle binomial coefficient 2n choose n. 2n choose n when n is equal to 2 is 6 and 2n choose n is strictly increasing with n. We can upper bound 2 to the power 2n by the number of terms here, which is 2n times 2n choose n. So we have a lower bound on 2n choose n, which is 4 to the power n divided by 2n. 2n choose n is living between this lower bound, 4 to the power n over 2n, and the upper bound that we have derived earlier. Note that this upper bound is derived assuming that we don't have a prime in the set n plus 1, n plus 2, all the way to 2n. Now let's take the lower bound together with the upper bound. So we have 4 to the power n over 2n is less than or equal to 2n to the power square root 2n minus 1, 4 to the power 2n over 3. Move this to the other side. So we have 4 to the power n over 3, and then move this 2n here is less than or equal to 2n to the power square root 2n. Take the logarithm of both sides. So n over 3 log 4 is less than or equal to square root 2n log 2n. Divide both sides by the square root of n. So we have square root n over 3 log 4 is less than or equal to square root 2 times log 2n. Square root n is less than or equal to 3 times square root 2 over log 4 times log 2n. Now, if this inequality is violated, if square root n is strictly greater than this constant here times log 2n, then we don't have our assumption. Then this set 
including the numbers, the positive integers from n plus 1 to 2n, must contain at least one prime number. We want now to see for what values of n this inequality holds. Consider the function g of alpha equal to log 2 alpha divided by the square root of alpha, alpha greater than or equal to 4. Take the first derivative with respect to alpha, and we obtain 1 minus 1 half log 2 alpha over alpha square root alpha. Now, if alpha is greater than or equal to 4, then the numerator will be negative. The first derivative of this function is strictly negative when alpha is greater than or equal to 4. This is a strictly decreasing function. Let's apply this to our case. Rewrite the inequality as log 2n over square root n less than log 4 over 3 times square root 2. Now, we want to find the values of n for which this inequality is satisfied. This left-hand side is strictly decreasing in n. And so it becomes strictly less than the right-hand side when n is 427 or more. In this case, this inequality is satisfied, this inequality is violated, and we know that this set will contain at least one prime. What about the smaller values of n at the very beginning? We have seen that for n that is 1, 2, all the way to 426, actually to 520, there is at least one prime number in this set from n plus 1 to 2n. So we are done.